Hi everyone, alongside Mike Trossel, I'm Dave Giancola, and thank you for joining us for History Makers. Well, we all know Annika Sorenstam put herself and her home country of Sweden on the golf map with her win in the 1995 U.S. Women's Open, but she wasn't done. Coming into 1996 at Pine Needles, the biggest storyline was what she was going to do for an encore. Well, how about setting the scoring record by five strokes, punctuated by a final round 66. Enjoy the second leg of Annika Sorenstam's back-to-back -back titles. Back to the tee. She's working on that first takeaway, Roger. Uh, she has a tendency to take the club a little bit outside and then throw it from there. And if you don't watch out, it'll go left, which is what she did at the last fairway she missed. So she's trying to make sure it goes back straight so that she can throw it right down the line. It looked pretty good there. Well, this one's going up the right side. Needs a bounce. She got, got it. it. Yep, that'll be fine. Sometimes when you work on trying to get it back inside, Roger, you hit it right after going left. But that one worked out fine. As you take a look at the 95-96 worldwide record for Annika, 24 top tens in the 33 starts among the six victories. She has been the dominant player. And she's also won on four continents for such a youngster. And even a younger player, 24 years old, uh, Brandy Burton. Monica's 25. That's a three wood going right down the left center. And in also a good position. Johnny, you mentioned Dave Stockton helping her out. She really lost her zeal for the game, but the senior star has kind of revitalized the 24 year old game. But she trails Annika by five. Jane Geddes. Trails by four as we continue this final round coverage from Pine Needles. Tammy Green, this for a birdie. Oh, just out of the right side of the hole. 36 year old from Somerset, Ohio. Just watch her reaction here. In, 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 no. And Dave, she's a player you have to watch out for because she's so steady, she makes a lot of pars, hardly ever makes a mistake. Good open record, too, and let's go to 10. Bunker shot, third one for Laura Davies here. Just a simple little uh, explosion shot. She does a very fine job. And she, I guess, was trying to make it. Back to eight. Second shot for the leader. From 130 yards, just a little bit right of the hole, wants to hook. Yeah. Ahead to 11, her fellow countrywoman for birdie, Neumann. And Neumann has her first birdie since the fourth hole, and she moves back to plus two for the championship. As you take a look back out of the fairway at eight, Brandy Burton getting ready for her second. Roger. 123 yards to the hole with a nine iron, a little bit uphill. Good angle from this left center of the fairway. However, she's looking right in at the flag. Good. Gosh darn it, Brandy. Going well right, right side of the green. Just about hole high as it checked up. And now the birdie attempt to Laura Davies. And she's played the par fives and five under this week as she oh. moves to plus two, okay? She was sure shaking her hand on that. She had 198 yards into the flag, 20 yards further than she had yesterday, hit the same club, a six iron, and you saw it went, still went over the green. Unbelievable. And it's uphill, too. Exactly. I mean, she carried that ball on the green. She must have carried that thing at least 180 yards uphill. That's a tremendous six iron. To the ninth. Chris Cheddar, this for a birdie. Cheddar one under for a round today with that putt. She won one time on the LPGA Tour, but her biggest year last year when she won over $360,000 as you look at the leaderboard and Sorenstam still four strokes ahead. Cheddar moving up. 
gets her to even par. And let's go Donna, join Donna Capone. Jane's ball's in the primary rough, which is about three inches, but she's uh, she's drawn a very good line, 139 yards to a front front right pin placement. Just Marsha was a little bit too close. Uh, yeah, the marshals can drive you nuts sometimes because right, right when you're t ready to take it back, they'll stick the quiet sign up, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't mind them being there. Just don't give me the quiet stuff. <laughs> well, they're trying to help, and they got their <laughs> back turned to you, and they don't know when you're getting ready. But anyhow, she's got to make her move. Very strong player. And says her game is at its peak right now. Everything but her putting is very strong. Oh, Donald Ross. Well, that uh, shot got carried away by the slope. She thought it was good. You could tell by the way she was holding her finish that it was on lane. There's a... Now, Pat Bradley, what has she got, Donna? Pat's 130. The breeze right now is moving from the players left to right, and this whole play's a little bit downhill. Probably a half a clip down. One under so far today. chance to get in the red figures for the championship. 45 years old and has won all four of the modern day LPGA major events. And let's go to eight. Randy Burton for birdie to get back to one under. Back to 12. Katrina Neal's mark. Second shot at 12. She stands at plus one on the championship. She is two under for the day. Hold up. Stay there. Very nice shot for Katrine Nielsmark. Back to 11. Laura Davies on the tee, 353 yards, par four. Changing her tune, deciding to go with a driver. She's been hitting two iron off every hole but the par fives, but I guess she figures it's time to start taking advantage of her big distance, and that's a huge, huge drive. That's something she's played with a little bit this week. Uh, when do I start to become aggressive and attack this course? Back to eight, Soren Stam for birdie. definition of a smooth wow. stroke. Take a look at that one. Wow. The lead is five for Annika Sorenstam. She's held the lead since making the turn in the second round on Friday. Can she hold on for back-to-back -back Open Championships? This is Jane Geddes. You remember her shot went into the bunker on the right. This is her third shot. Not an easy shot from where she was, but I know a little disappointed with that second shot and how it turned out. Let's go back to the ninth tee, leader. So I just keep hitting fairways. She's doing everything you're supposed to do. But she's been doing it all week too, John. Just hitting the fairways and the greens. And of course that putting stroke you mentioned there at nine, <laughs> at, at the eight was Pure as Jane Geddes tries to save her par here at the ninth. Oh. Well, just as she makes a little charge, she falls back a little bit. So out in 35 as we go to Laura Davies. Just a just a wedge on the downslope. A little unlucky being on the downslope, but a little unlucky there too. Not able to take advantage of uh, the big drive at 11, back to nine. Pat Bradley for her birdie, which would put her two under for the round today. One under for the championship if she should make it. Her stroke's not smooth like Annika's, but it gets the job done, huh, Dave? It has for 23 years. Good speed. Oh. Doggone. Well, good putt. It's a good putt, Dave, and she's hit some wonderful irons into these locations where it tuck a little bit. Yeah, what she, let's go to 12. Birdie putt, Katrin Millsmark at 12. 
Stands up plus two now. Chris Cheddar at the par five tenth, her second shot. She's at even par. Get a big tee shot. Probably going with the two iron. Big high backswing. Might be going right. She plays the ball from right to left, and she's sneaky long. She puts a lot of overspin on her shot. Let's see if it hangs in there. Nope. It's like hitting to the top of your head, these greens. Well, Chris Cheddar, a member of Shady Oaks Country Club in Fort Worth, Texas, and that just happens to be uh, another member there, pretty famous, Ben Hogan, who she's worked with from time to time, and we asked her if the legend might be watching today. Uh, yeah, as far as I know, Mr. Hogan is watching, and I, I know he always roots for me. Um, every time I talk to him, he, you know, he knows what it's like to be playing on tour and what a grind it is, and he's always real understanding, and uh, both he and his wife are rooting for me. And she says he doesn't necessarily teach her things, but they just hit some balls on the range from time to time and just commiserate. Talk golf. That's great. Back to nine. Roger Maltby with this group. Roger, what kind of shot does she have? Well, it has 131 yards to the hole. Wind against the player slightly going off a little later. Oh. It's a birdie opportunity. All right. Got this left of the hole at the center of the green. Well, that's what she wanted. You don't want to flirt with that flag that's just 15 feet from the right fringe. Let's go to 11. Third shot for Laura Davies. try that tap in to remain at plus two and back to nine and brandy burton and roger maltby brandy's got 120 and she's going to have to start aiming at the flags dave this is uh it's time to make a move if you're going to get it done well they all are and a player like bradley knows not birdie in there she's going to have to do something on the back brandy one over today Favorite shots, a three-quarter punch iron. That's just what that was. That's a nice shot to the ninth. Gives her a good chance for a birdie and possible pickup of a shot. You can see the final rounds that uh, she's had with the exception of 1995. Really some high scores for a girl. It is really very talented. I thought she was going to be a world beater when she came out. I'm sure she did too. Well, Dave, a back-to-back -back Open Championship would certainly be sweet indeed for Annika Sorenstam, but she also has fond memories of her fellow countrywoman who paved the way for Sweden in the Open back in 88. In uh, 1988, I remember watching uh, Lisa Lott Norman win the Open, uh, and it was very inspiring. Um, she comes from a little course outside Stockholm, and so do I. So, you know, felt some similarities, and uh, I figured, you know, if she can do it, maybe I can do it one day. Well, in the last year, you know, they've been calling me the 1995 U.S. Open champion, and it, it's really nice, you know, an honor and a tournament I always wanted to win, and uh, it's always been a good start to a tournament when they announced that. The toughest thing is, has been, you know, to be the Open champion is, Time, you know, people pull you right, people pull you left. Uh, it's been really hard to manage everything, and uh, there's a lot of responsibilities. And uh, I just felt like I didn't have time for myself. And you know, I'm a person, and I have hobbies too. And, and I'm, I think it's important to do that and find the balance. So, I mean, that's how I function when I find a balance between work and myself. And uh, in the beginning, it was tough, but uh, now I'm, I think I'm getting used to it, and I can handle it a little better. Well, winning um, the U.S. Open once again would be would be wonderful. It's uh, obviously a goal I've had, and to achieve it again um, would be wonderful. Um, it's been it's probably been tough to do it, but I'll be very pleased where I played throughout the week, and, uh, and I'm going to keep the trophy for a little for a little longer. That's what she'd like to do. Only five players have successfully defended their Open titles. The last Betsy King back in '90. Sorenstam at the ninth, this for a birdie. Beautiful speed. 
Just don't make any mistakes. Nice solid pars. Let's go to 10. Third shot from the bunker for Cheddar on the par five. Beautiful touch. And so a chance for three straight birdies for Chris Cheddar and an opportunity to join Sorenstam as the only players under par as we take a look at a beautiful shot down at the Pine Needles Lodge and Golf Club from the MetLife Blimp Snoopy One. And inside of the Blimp's gondola, a state-of-the-art camera system capable of tracking a golf ball in flight from an altitude of 1,200 feet. Back down to the course to the ninth. And Brandy Burton, this for a birdie to get within Within five, Roger. Not much break here at all. Pretty true running putt. Go. In. That's away. Good drive. Very good second. So with that birdie, goes back to even par for today. One under for the championship. Solid front nine, 33 for Sorenstam. Let's go to 10. Tammy Green, birdie attempt. Looks good. Is good. She's back to even par for the championship. Her first birdie of the day after nine straight pars. And she's been very successful in major championships, especially last year, Marlene. And she's had uh, major surgery this year. She was out for two months. And Cheddar joins Burton at one under par, tied for second. Three straight birdies for Cheddar. Back out in the fairway, Jane Geddes. Jane's 197 yards, but she's not gonna move this ball very far. We've got a lot more club on yeah, that than I thought you would. You think you'd have a half a grade when there's one hole in the golf course you can get to in two and you don't even fucking drive in the fairway. That is like she's taking I my job. Shot. I should be absolutely shot. Well while Jane continues to talk to herself back at the tee at ten, final two some Brandy Burton getting ready, Roger. Well, this is a par five. Brandy can obviously reach. Tee shot is key. You heard Jane Geddes getting on herself for not hitting the fairway here. That's the important part right here is getting the ball in the fairway so she can take advantage of her length. Fairway is pretty wide, about 35 yards, so plenty of room out there. Uphill, though, over that water is 180. And Brandy's drive in distance yesterday average was 249 yards. This is up a hill. Won't get much roll, but a nice play. Here's a look at how the leaders have played the par fives, and a reminder, only two here at Pine Needles. And Annika Sorenstam, who's really uh, not the longest of these hitters, leads the way so far through three at four under. It's interesting, Annika actually um, hit it past uh, Brandy yesterday on this hole, though she's sort of maybe sneaky, getting a little sneaky long. Uh, uh, she can hit it out there decent at distance. That's good, Roger. Just another good one. Let's see what kind of distance she gets compared to. She gets more roll than Brandy. And see that? She just runs right on by her, says, see ya. Back up the fairway. Pick up the third shot of Pat Bradley. Even par. That's a pitching wedge from 97. Needed one more hop to get back to that flag. Ahead to 18, Cindy Rarick. Try to pick up a birdie. Put her second shot right where you want it, underneath the hole. Looks great. Woo! Cindy. Birdie at 18 for Rarick in a 68. Beautiful final round. Finishes the championship at plus three. Five shots is the lead for the defending champion as Chatter and Burton have joined in the chase. They're also under par. Laura Davies still has quite a bit of golf left. She's at plus two. And we'll be right back in a moment.
Back to the action at the 10th, third shot, Jane Geddes. Little uphill, probably just a sandwich. Perfect, right there, right underneath the hole, right where you want it. Maybe all that talking got her inspired. Well, she's a very emotional player. Well, she knows this is a hole that she could maybe make eagle on if she hit a good drive, you know, and pick up a shot or two. So you hate to pass up that opportunity by missing in, in, the, in the left rough. Well, only two of the 15 amateurs who uh, started this Open Championship made the cut. One was 18-year-old Christy Kerr, who plans to turn pro right out of high school after the Curtis Cup later this month and what she'll be participating in. This was the first hole, the par five first. That was her third shot, and she converted this birdie attempt. Very confident young player. Finished with an impressive 69 today to finish the championship at plus 11. Marissa Baena, another amateur to make the cut. Turned 19 years old yesterday, the reigning NCAA champion from the University of Arizona. And she doesn't look too big, but she was leading the stats in long driving this week, so a little uh, power pack uh, gal right there. And had the incredible shot to help clinch the championship for the Wildcats. As we take a look at Jane Getty's birdie attempt at 10, Pat Bradley's already made par here. About six feet inside right. Oh, oh. Two. Oh, went Easy, left. Donna. Yeah, I know. She, it went left as soon as she made contact with that ball. We could really see it on the, on the television, Donna. She just eased up into that putt, almost like trying to be too careful. I saw her on the practice screen yesterday in the late, late afternoon working on the putting stroke. Back out in the fairway now. Brandy Burton, Roger. Brandy's got 227 yards. Well, this is uphill, the wind. What there is is coming from the right. She can there. There's no question about that. Okay, that's good. Got this ball going to the right. Gonna miss the right side of the green. To 11, second shot of Tammy Green. Six back. She just has a short iron and she hits a punch shot. Wonderful iron player again, always steady. Chance for two birdies in a row for Green, back to 10, second for Sorenstam. Three wood from 223. Got this ball going at the right side of the green. And running. Good looking shot. Great distance control, Roger. She's got every kind of control. <laughs> Ahead to 11, Chris Cheddar. Coming off a birdie at 10. Trying to punch out of that rough, a real crisp swing. I don't know if it'll stop, though. It'll be a long birdie try for her fourth straight. So the game is on in Southern Pines, North Carolina, and the chase continues to try and catch Sorenstam. Pinehurst area in beautiful North Carolina covers 760 square miles and it features nearly 600 golf holes and there's a beautiful one there. Now number 10 there, the par 5 and uh, Tammy Green's on the 11th here, putting for birdie. Tammy Green. Oh. That was a bid for two straight birdies and a chance for Green to get under par. There's the third shot. A little different setup, ball back in her stance. Well, she's learned a lot of new shots from Dave Stockton around the green, perhaps that bunker shot, because that was played well back in her stance. To 13. Birdie attempt, Laura Davies stands at plus two on the championship. Oh, 
Shaw did in the heart for Laura Davies. So she's now at plus one with that seven behind Annika Sorenstein. Back to ten. And Annika Sorenstein with an eagle try, Roger. We'll move a little bit to her left. We're about 20 feet, but only gently. This is a, a makeable putt. Right Very here. makeable. Seven. She won a tournament on the U.S. Tour last year, and she beat all the American players by ten shots. Eight under par. Whoa. She's on a pace to break the all-time low U.S. Open scoring record by several shots, not just one or two. Well, this is just unbelievable. And the record is 277 by Lisa Lott Neumann in 1986 and Patty Sheehan in 1994. 277, and she's looking at 272 right now with all pars. Randy Burton trying to keep some sort of pace with this birdie try. Just about right edge. You would have thought Randy's power might have been a factor on this hole, but it was Annika that came away with the three. So a par for Burton, eagle for Sorenstam. Two shot swing right there in the final twosome. Just looking at her right there shows her strength, that she doesn't get real keyed up when she makes an eagle, and she's very calm when she made that double bogey yesterday. This girl's got all the qualities. It's no fluke. Let's take a look at that perfectly played hole one more time. This eagle putt just outside right edge. She strokes it with perfect pace. I like it, but... Hard to find any weaknesses in her game. Uh, well, I mean, she could, you know, have a little more strength, but she's still getting good distance, and she's keeping it in play. And this this, uh, this uh, woman right here is going to be around at the top spot for a long time at this rate. If she does, like we said, we, she just doesn't have any weaknesses. And her putting has become a real strength. Rookie of the year, player of the year, as you take a look at... Uh, some who have finished already and some still playing pine needles. And it needs to be said that Annika has got the low scoring average on tour this year and she has not won and it's, she was really overdue to win a tournament. So it's coming at a nice time. <laughs> she could have sort of, you know, maybe instead of this eight, seven shot lead, she could have spread it out and won four times. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, the best round of the day so far, 67 turned in by England's Allison Nicholas who finished at plus five. But here we are at the 11th tee, seven shot lead for Sorenstam. This is the par four, 353 yards. And sticking with the driver, right? It's just, I guess, if you got it going, you might as well flaunt it a little, Roger. Yeah, it was the only fairway she missed yesterday, but I'd be surprised if she missed it again today. And she didn't, right in the center. Well, why should she play safe now? She hits that driver so straight. It's one of the best clubs in her bag. There it is. Great draft, uh, graphic. Just four fairways missed all championship long. And that putts, uh, you know, even par, or, uh, two putts a hole have been 20 putts, and she's five, mid five, one putts. So that's pretty sweet. Five out of 10. By this ball going left. Uh, got a good bounce. Well, it stays so. out of the primary rough. But the task has become even bigger for the rest of the field. A seven shot bulge now for the superstar from Sweden. Do here. 
here is not really miss it above the hole uh, off the green. He wants to land it just on the front edge and probably his main concern now is just to make a good solid swing, good contact and good thoughts. Beautifully struck there, right at the flag. Watch out for this one. This is a shot of his life. Great moments in golf. NBC Sports. We'll have a lot of fun describing those legendary greens as well. The leader, Sorenstam, off the tee. Got a nine iron from 120 yards and right at it. Right underneath the hole, Roger. Green light special. Oh, man. To 18, we pick up the second shot of Beth Daniel, who led this championship back on Thursday after the first round. Plus three so far on her round today at plus eight for the championship. And that'll be an easy kick in birdie for Daniel, who remember needs only one more major championship to gain Hall of Fame status. Back to 11, Brandy Burton. From 100 yards, this is pulled well off to the hole. Well, the way Annika's playing, Roger, it um, you know makes her game pale in significance. Well, until the 14th hole yesterday, Sorenstam had been virtually flawless. But three putts later, her round did take a major turn. This was for par on the 14th after missing the green and having it roll back. The comeback bogey try. Power lip out. So she had to settle for a double bogey and her lead was all of a sudden gone. But she gathered herself on the 15th yesterday with this par save, the very next hole. And her lead would be rebuilt to three shots with a spectacular birdie bomb on the difficult par 4 17th. So it was yesterday when she really showed the medal of a champion and has just taken it to a whole new level today. She had every opportunity in the world after that uh, out of nowhere double bogey on two nice shots uh, to sort of maybe let it get away from her. But uh, man, that was impressive. And then today is even more impressive. To the 12th, Chris Cheddar. Third shot. She's her driver in the rough. Chris Cheddar is at one under par on the championship, three under par on the day. And she's losing ground to Annika Sorenstam. Tammy Green also hit her drive in the rough. She's there for a par. Let's move back to 11. Brandy Burton. Across the green, Roger. About a 30-footer, but pretty close to the fall line, John. It will move a little bit to her right and quite fast from here, but not a lot of break in this putt. right at the end. Not much though, like Roger said. Well, as Annika lines up another birdie putt, chance to look at some other scores. There is the NCAA champion, Baena, turning in a plus 15 for the championship. Pat Bradley at even par through 11. Well, she's got one of those putts that you just can't wait to hit almost, Roger. Just right where you want it, isn't it? It's just right underneath the hole from about seven, eight feet. You might try to sneak a little bit to the right, maybe the edge or just inside, depending on the speed she wants to hit it. And she hits the putts with a lot of pace. Uh, her putts are going two, three, four, five feet by all the time. You don't see her come up short often.
Well, hit that one softly, and that's all that kept. That's all it took to keep that one out. Otherwise, a little more pace you'd have that. To 18. That's all that's left for a birdie finish for Beth Daniel. Only the seventh birdie of the day turned in on 18. The reason we haven't heard of her too much after the first round is she's just been back from injuries and is not real strong yet. Back at 11. Burton for par. And ahead to 12. All right, we saw the uh, pitch of Chris Cheddar, this for par. And I repeat, she is one under par for the championship, three under par for the day, and she has lost one stroke to Annika Sorenstam on this round. This for par. Cross-handed style, very quiet hand action. Excellent pull, but she remains seven back. Back out to the fairway at the par four, 12, 350 yards. Looks like Jane Geddes will be first to hit Annika Pony. Uh, these two players are obviously aware of what Annika's done. Yes, in fact, uh, Jane is walking off that tee, was looking at her uh, standard bear that I didn't see what Annika was doing. Jane's 128. Looks like Bradley's going to well, go first, Donna. But I don't think it is. I think it's Jane Geddes, but Bradley's gone. And Bradley's 126. As you said, the pin in the middle to the left side of the green. Those are going to have to start firing right at it if they're going to make any birdies. Very nice shot by Pat Bradley. She stands at even, has certainly played well in the final round of the U.S. Open, 72.9. Shot a final round record 66 to win her U.S. Women's Open in 1981. Annika's threatening that too. Now Jane Geddes, second shot. Jane with a nine iron. Don't want to miss it left. She's losing a little right. That's, that's not a bad miss. That's a popular spot, huh, Bob? Yes, it hole. is very popular. Hit to the middle of these greens, puck to the edges. Now back to the tee. Annika Sorenstam. Roger, it's just not supposed to be this easy. Well, she's making it look terribly simple, Trump. There's no question about that. I, I didn't think I'd ever live long enough to see somebody hit a golf ball straighter than Calvin Pete, but I think he met his match. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're not even in the right side and the left side. They're just all right in the middle. This has just been as complete a performance as I can remember watching. And she is not able to enjoy it yet, but uh, if she could, keeps this lead till about probably heading home on 15, she'll start smiling a lot more. But she still she knows that it's not a guarantee yet. Roger? No. <laughs> <laughs> right center, perfect. Uh, at the par 313th, 171 the yardage, Chris Cheddar. Chris has played the par threes and one under par this week. Playing a punch cut. Powerful player. Left edge. Andy Burton. Just going down to the left center of the fairway. He is in the fairway. Well, it's been a marvelous week here in the Pinehurst area, and we have uh, to look forward to more championships in the future because in 1999, just up the road, the famed Pinehurst number two will be the site of the U.S. Open in 1999 and also some
great trips in 97 and 98, the Olympic Club in your neck of the woods, Johnny, and then mm -hmm. also Pebble Beach Golf Links in the year 2000. Yeah, I got two out of three years in my backyard. It's pretty sweet. And the galleries this week here in North Carolina have really supported this USGA event and we hope have broken all the records this week. Yeah, they set records uh, last year at the Broadmoor, record attendance uh, in the first three rounds, and I assume it will be a record-setting weekend in Pine Needles. Danny, this is a Pat Bradley birdie attempt. I remember Pat tied for third last year at the Broadmoor to Annika Sorenstam. She presently stands at even. Anytime the uh, pin has been on the right-hand side of the greens trump, she's tried to cut it in there and has double-crossed and had some long putts. This was a pin that I really thought she'd be able to turn it into and didn't. Well, Donna, she didn't appear to be a bit disappointed with hitting it where she did, so maybe out of the, uh, that situation, she was happy with standing underneath the ball the way she was. Right. This has been a very tough hole location today. 12 was allowed just seven birdies on the day. It's hard to read, too. I was talking to one of the marshals, and everybody uh, on the right side is under-reading it. It breaks way more than it looks like. Uh, birdie attempt, Jane Geddes. Started the day at even. Two birdies, two bogeys is even. Well, you've been here all day, but I think it's about a, a good foot and a half break to the left. That's what the marshal said. But almost every ball he says been low. That one's not. That was a great putt. She deserved better. Mm -hmm. That's a couple of those last few holes. She thought she had it. Well, she tried to make a run at Annika Sorenstam, but misses like that, 216. The par three, 167 yards today on the tee, Catherine Millsmark started today at three over, is now just one over for the championship. It's another one of the very fine Swedish players, great shot. It's a lot of speed, and she too is a long hitter. Good shot into 16. Had a chance to go to three under for the day. Let's go back to 12. And the par temp, Jane Geddes. Well, it, it went in and hit the bottom. Par four for Jane Geddes. She stays at even. And at the par three, 13, second shot, Tammy Green. Mm. Very difficult. Looks like she's setting up weird to it. Tammy, to this point, had, had no bogeys. Going back to 15 yesterday, but she'll definitely have one here at 13 unless she holds that bunker shot. Now, oh, Pat Bradley. Bob, this putt's only a foot and a half. But she goes through her regular routine. She just doesn't take this putt for granted, even though it's that short. It's a 45 years old, but he has an open 86. And by 45 years old, you know you can miss those. Now 13, Tammy Green, third shot. Roger Yardage. Randy Burton has 142 yards to the hole. Cannot let this ball get left of the hole, otherwise it can come back down into that deep bunker. That's good. At an eight iron, and it's going at the center of the green. Darn it. Sounds a little frustrated, Trump. Yes, well, I think watching the performance of uh, I guess Sorenstam would frustrate anybody, no matter what you do. Now she's left herself 135 yards to the hole. And you'll notice, folks, that the caddies are very involved with lining up the players on their shots and their putts. Some people are not sure they like that too much. 
wondering if it shouldn't be more individualistic over the ball. It's a big nine iron right of the hole, but in a good spot. Take a look at her little, uh, uh, it's, it's peculiar. Watch the head action. You just, if she, the head goes back to the right, going back, and then watch coming down. It never hits the chin again. It just rides up and through, and she gets to watch it a little longer than most people. And I think that's one of the best things about her swing, being small and slight and little. She has a tremendous shoulder turn, even though that head comes up, Johnny. Really, the only thing that she can do because of that is hit a ball thin occasionally. Uh, it's par 3, 13th. Birdie attempt for Chris Cheddar. Go. Oh, goodness. As we continue the final round of the 51st U.S. Women's Open, it is Annika Sorenstam's show. And Jane Geddes was among those who had a chance today if it wasn't for Sorenstam running away. Well, Danny, she's standing on the tee at 13, and I think she's uh, witnessed a remarkable performance by the defending champion and understands it. Now, this is Tammy Green on tape at 13 for Pokey. Now, that ruins an awful good round for Tammy Green. Unfortunately, that's a double bogey. Serve who plus two on the championship. The one thing Tammy's fought after having surgery this year is fatigue, and she said it sometimes sets in on the back side. Well, right below the blimp now, Annika Sorenstam. Randy Burton. Right before her now, Annika. Again, Roger, this is the right spot to be in this game. It's underneath the hole, a little bit right to left, about six, eight inches. This is the putt that uh, the player's been under-reading. But a good leave. To the tee at 13. The yardage is 171. You can see it's downhill. Jane Geddes. Bob, this is a six iron that she's elected to hit. Very upright swing, gets a little shot at the top. And pulls down and across it. Strong, a lot of speed. Jane has played the par threes in plus four. Excellent shot. To the tee at 14. 401 yards. Powerful player, big arc. Trying to take a driver over the right corner and it may not quite get over the mounds. In the rough. Got over the mounds though. Kind of a gutsy play. Well, the battle for second is being staged. Cheddar and Burton tied at one under and back to 12. All right, Annika Sorenstam now for another par. Andy Burton has already made her par at the 12th. Four under on the day, eight under on the championship, and she's gonna put new fingerprints over her old fingerprints on that U.S. Women's Open trophy. You are watching the U.S. Women's Open on NBC Sports. Look at the 13th green here at Pine Needles, par three. Part of the par 70 layout here, put together by Donald Ross back in 1927. We mentioned Pinehurst number two, the open site in 99, another Donald Ross creation. The 13th. Birdie attempt, Pat Bradley. This would put her in red numbers for the championship. No. Now head to 15. Laura Davies, this for a par to stay at plus one. And she's got it, a real good two putt from about 65 feet. It's a long hitting English star. Let's go to 17. 
Third shot, Val Skinner to the difficult par four. Longest four par on the golf course. Oh, oh my oh. gosh. Oh, man. Second hardest hole on the course. She'll remain at plus three, back to 13. And Jane Getty's attempt to get under par is successful. She stands at one under on the day, one under on the championship. The 86 U.S. Open champion. And ahead to 16. The par 3 16th, Laura Davies, her tee shot. Hole in the right front portion of the green today. It's a little short, spins down to the left. A lot of balls gathered down there. Hard, hard flag to shoot at. Let's go to 13, the other par 3 on the Hi, right. Dave Meyer, 171 the yardage. Annika Sorenstam on the tee. Roger, have you got the club? Six iron, slightly downhill, just 157 to the front edge. Comfortable six iron. And a miss hit. This ball is headed to the right. And that's not the place to leave it. Short side in the right bunker. First mistake, really. What happened, Johnny? Well, let's just take a look at it and see. Uh, setting up right. Perfectly takes it back straight. Didn't go outside with it. Watching he comes down. Just sort of you know that head movement going forward like that. I'm not saying she's got a groove, but that's the tendency. If you move your head forward, you usually hit a little right. But she's got a groove, so I don't know if I can claim that. Well, Brandy Burton. Also six iron. This ball going a little bit right of the flag. If it gets up, no, short. Ahead to 14. Second shot from the rough for Chris Cheddar. Sitting up a little. Oh, Chris. <laughs> Just a mad lash at that ball. She's got a lot of speed and power. She does. She's a very handsy player. She uses her wrist as much as anyone. And a lot of arm speed, too. Just whip back, whip through. You can see a beautiful banana-shaped hole. This uh, 14th hole, I think, just a masterpiece by Ross. Uh, just that you want to curve it right around the corner there. And you want to hit it right at the end of that cart path, the right side with a little fade. That's a three-wood, Johnny. Perfect. Pat Bradley. Problem on this. Up some good golf. Yeah, the problem here is you drive it right through the fairway if you don't watch out. One under for her round today. Back to 14 from the bunker. Chris Cheddar's third. Beautiful. Great form there. A lot of spin. Made it look easy. And that was her coach right there. To 16. And Laura Davies. This to go even par for the championship. Tremendous competitor. Just there it is. Even par. Two under for today. She's acting like she's one behind, Dave. Well, she just she is a great person to watch play. She just second shot. Soren stop. Caught it thin, Roger. Had a little bit of a downhill lie. The club bounced on her. I'm surprised she didn't pick the club up more. She took it back low and short, which is not as good a way as coming up and swinging down with the slope more. Well, let's take a look at that. Watch her backswing. Most of the time, people pick it up quickly and get the club high. See, she has just a, like a half swing, just a halfway through, and then hits up on a little. She should have uh, chased down after a little more and just thumped it. She might have forgotten how to hit those shots, John. She yeah. had to play. That's, <laughs> right. That's right. <laughs> no second shot that chipped by Brandy Burton at 13. Well, that's a green to work with here. Just an eight iron pitch it just onto the green. We'll move a little bit from her right to left, but not very much break. Skid it on her. That was not a good one, Roger. No, it wasn't. It just kind of skidded and got away immediately. Must have been thinking about making it or something because you'd never, uh, you wouldn't see her knock it that far by and that easy of a pitch shot. She could have putted that, couldn't she? 
She could have. That would certainly would have been one of the options. You bet. Roger, uh, guess the distance of this putt now for Annika. Well, it's got to be a good 35-footer. And really, in the last two days, that is the first time, with the exception of 14 yesterday, where she was unfortunate to had really hit two very good shots on that hole into the green. But uh, uh, this is the first time she's really put it in the wrong place, a bad place. And the uh, viewers who just tuned in need to know that starting with this hole, it's not a real hard hole, but starting now from here to 18, there are all kinds of bogeys and double bogey potential possibilities. So, you know, if she happened to three putt this, I'm not saying any the wheels are going to fall off, but you just don't want to have, when you, even though you got a big lead, you don't want some negative things start creeping in because they can grow. Well, this should move just a little bit from her left to right back uphill slightly. Firm, Roger. Oh, she's let that get away. That's three and a half to four feet. Yeah, you, you know, you got a seven shot lead. You don't want to have a five shotter walking off the green. To 14. Chris Cheddar for her par. This is a very slippery downhiller. Uh, she needs to play this putt just about inside the right edge. Nicely done, remains at one under, tied with Geddes and Burton. Only four players under par. Back to 13. And the par attempt of Brandy Burton. And not much here, Trump. This is really a very, very flat green. Very little movement in it. Very subtle breaks. Three-way tie for second between Cheddar, Geddes, Burton. Roger, on screen, that was dead straight. There's just not much movement on this one. So, a bogey four for Brandy Burton. She is now at even. And a bogey putt up coming for Sorenstam. Yeah, that was a bad bogey on Brandy's part. I was going to say nine out of ten times she's going to get that ball up and down from the front of the screen, so she really let one get away. And one of those ten should have been in. And this is, this is the first time I've seen Annika really not be in the present, even after she hit her putt from behind the hole, was staring back at the bunker and shaking her head as though she was still thinking about the bunker shot she played. Uh, Roger, last time she dropped a shot yesterday at 14, that double bogey. She is. She's been clean to this point, but this now for bogey. Sorenstam now seven under for the championship, three under for the day, and she leads by seven. Well, Johnny, as we take a look at the leaderboard, the six-shot lead for Annika Sorenstam, you mentioned the difficult holes beginning with 14. The final five have had some teeth in them this week. Let's take a look. 14th hole is a par four, 401 yards, and now the course starts to get real tough. You can see this dog leg right. It's difficult to hit the fairway because you have to fit it right in the turn of this area right here, this shaded area. If you get it in there, you got a good chance on your second, but if you hit it to the right, look at the kind of mounding you have, and of course those pine trees are definitely in play. Yesterday, Pat Bradley came to the 14th hole, four under par for the day. Although her approach was exact, she couldn't capitalize on making birdie number five. The 15th hole is a straightaway par four, 405 yards. Interesting hole because the hole doesn't say too much to you and so it's hard to fit the ball in the fairway. But a good straight drive down the right center because there's tremendous slope from right to left will leave you in the left side of the fairway which is the flattest part of the area to hit from. The second shot, as you can see, leaves you a nice opening in front, but you got to watch out for those two bunkers right and left. 16th hole is a nice level par three of 167 yards. You've got bunkers all around and one well short of the green that sort of throws off your depth perception if you don't watch out. But it's a nice hole, a small flattish green, and really not too bad of a shot if the wind isn't blowing. During the second round, Meg Mallon appeared to be disappointed with this tee shot. But remember, in this game, looks can be deceiving. A 
near ace. 17th hole, par four, longest hole on the golf course for a four par, 424 yards. I think it's the hardest hole out here. It's really difficult. You got a dog lake left right here. You got to fit your drive in that shaded area. There is OB right and left. You can get the ball in the fairway there. Uh, the players are left with a long shot to the green. Yesterday, Jane Geddes came to the 17th and third place. Her approach to this difficult par four was precise. Although she didn't gain an advantage because she misses this putt. You do have to be careful on the second shot approach because there's bunkers right and left and again out of bounds close on the left side. 18th hole is a fine finishing hole, 418 yards, par four. Again, a dog leg left, trees both left and right. When the pressure's on, this tee shot right here gets pretty tight. But if you can hit it on top of this hill, about 225 yards, it catches the down slope and it'll run down to where the arrow is now. From there, you're left with a downhill second shot, which is very difficult to hit crisply. It's easy to hit the ball thin or heavy, and you can see this green is bunkered by three bunkers, but the tough part of this green is the way it falls off in the back and on the right. You can see right there, there's gonna be a lot of balls on the green, trickle down the hill into that long primary rough. Brandy Burton found herself in this position. She played a tremendous chip shot, enabling her to get up and down to save par. The 18th hole will offer a lot of excitement when the final groups arrive here later today. Well, the defending champion has arrived at 14 with a six shot lead. 401 yards. And those are tough holes, but she does have a significant cushion if she bogeys every hole coming in. Someone will still have to play the final holes under par to catch her. And it's easy to smile when you just keep hitting in the short stuff. And I'll tell you, that's the club, the driver won her the golf tournament if she wins. Now Brandy Burton coming off a bogey just like Soren Stom at 13. for Burton. Up ahead on the 14th green, Pat Bradley, this for birdie to get to one under. Pat's 40 footer will move to her left. Didn't hit a very good iron shot into this hole location. To 15. Chris Cheddar. Is on tape happened earlier four and five yard par four and she let that really get away to the right better watch it up there too because there's a boundary she's very close to that and the cables you see it came to rest the cables almost helping out a oh i think they may <laughs> have a little bit john but she, and kay cockrell has been up there to look at that okay Oh boy, she just stayed in bounds by the hair on her chinny chin chin, uh, about two inches inside the boundary line, and she marked her ball. And then uh, she and the officials, the, the referees, are removing the cables. And in the process, her ball moved slightly. But she had it marked, right? Yes. So when it's marked, that just means she puts it back there. Let David Fake could enlighten us a little on that. Yeah, well, uh, the cables are a movable obstruction, so the player properly mocked her ball in the event that the uh, ball moved after moving the obstruction. The ball did move, but she knows exactly where to replace it. David, if those cables were stretched such that she couldn't quite move them enough to clear her stance, uh, what would her option be then? Well, then we'd have a little bit of a difficult situation, Johnny, because uh, um, if they, uh, they're movable and you're trying to get the, uh, give the player complete relief. Uh, we check the cables before the, uh, the competition to make sure that, you, that they're very movable and that there's give in those uh, cables. And she puts her ball back and uh, sometimes it's hard to put it back exactly where it was after you mark it because it's so slippery after the cables are gone. So you have a situation there if it won't put, go back exactly where it was where you mark it, 
then you have a little different situation again, right? Well, that too is covered under the rules. Uh, if you can't, uh, when re you replace the ball, if it can't stay at rest at the spot where it's supposed to be replaced, you replace it at the nearest possible spot. Well, that is her caddy coach, Kirk Lucas, working with her. And they are still talking about the rule, but I can tell you off Pine Straw, living here in this area, she sure doesn't want to move her feet too much. And you got to be real careful not grounding your club. If you push down on the back of that uh, pine straw, these long uh, needled pines, which are sort of unique to Pinehurst area, uh, you know, it might, when you put it down, it might influence something four or five inches away. So you got to be really careful not to even pull any out, even though, though you don't think it's too close to the ball. Johnny, also the tendency is you want to sort of dig your feet in a little bit to get a, uh, you know, a firmer stance, and you might Move some pine needles around doing that as well. Let's go back to 14 while she's looking the shot over. Roger. Annika has 171 yards to the hole. John got a comfortable five iron. She has 157 to the front. So a five iron should fly up about eight to ten yards in the green and keep her underneath the hole. Just fairways and greens now, Annika. And she's missed hit this ball a little bit. It's going right toward that bunker. Well, she bogeyed the, the last, so. And it's uh, where she made double bogey yesterday. She went over the green and three putted for double. Well, back at 15 now, Chris Shetter. I think she's talking about moving a uh, gallery controlled stake. There's some stakes up ahead that, that are right in her line that she needs to have down. She has to hit a punch shot underneath pine trees, and she would almost have a perfectly clear shot except for one branch that is hooking down. It's almost directly in her line, so she'll have to be careful to avoid that particular branch. The good thing about pine needles, uh, you can work the ball. You can hit little slices and hooks. I grew up at Olympic Club in San Francisco, and this is a typical recovery shot. I learned to hit all kinds of shots out of there, and you can play out of it if you know what you're doing. She's just thrilled that she's not out of bounds. She's just a couple inches from OB. She's 152 yards to the front of the green. And she has a cut swing. So she could play this shot. Oh, it looks good. It gets a good hard bounce, and it did. That's a very nice shot by Chris Shetter. Three under for today's round, one under for the championship. Let's see how she plays this right there. She'll just pick it right out of there, hit that ball first. Boy, you can see the power of that golf swing. Well, a very nice shot, and she did escape a little disaster by not being out of bounds. And let's go back to 14. Brandy Burton in the fairway, her second. Well, nice shot again, Brandy. Ah! Left it out to the right, but safely on. As Sorenstam is bunkered at 14. And another look at this approach, Johnny. Well, she pushed it on the last hole, and then she's pushed it on this hole. Let's take a look at what she does here. See, she comes up ahead of it again, starts lifting that chin so early. You know, it's a wonder she could even hit the ball if you were teaching that, but she has it so grooved. And we're going to take another little look at this overhead. Watch this head action. Watch the top of her head to see if it comes up and out of it. You see, that's just, you got to have amazing timing to be able to, uh, control that, but obviously she does. We see a similar move on the PGA Tour from David Duvall, but at least David David stays a little more level with it. You know, his head, his chin moves, but his head doesn't come up quite so early. And the thing is, when you go, you know, she obviously has handled the pressure perfectly, but it's the kind of thing that she, you can see the lie in the bunker. But she doesn't want to start making bogeys, believe it or not. You, you know, even when you got a big lead, and I, 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 in my career, had quite a few big leads, you don't want to lose any of your lead because you think, oh my gosh, you know, what's happening? So she wants to stop this thing and get back to making pars. She knows the value of a par. Well, the shades are back on as she uh, steps into the sand for her third at 14. Double bogey yesterday, really the only hiccup. Roger, any problem with the backswing or anything else? I don't think so, Joe, but the ball is a little bit above her feet, which should, really should kind of help her get a kind of a, a tumbler up there. But she did get it heavy, though. Well, her last couple bunker shots have gone long, and I guarantee you that went through her mind. Uh, don't hit it like I did the last two times I was in a bunker. So a long par attempt left for Sorenstam 
at 14, ahead to 15. And Chris Cheddar with her third shot at the par 4 15th. Little 35 yard pitch shot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, she just gave it a little too much. Yeah. Mm. Hadn't had much practice yeah. doing that today. She's really played very well. Three under for the round, and let's go forward to 18. Lisa Lott Neumann for birdie. Very fortunate her ball didn't run off the green. So the champion back in 88. Again, this fourth round at plus three. And with this par on 18. Yeah, good work. A final round, even par 70. And back to 14, Burton for birdie. So that will produce a par for Burton. She's even par. Which is really a great total, 280. Uh, you need to know it's a par 70 course, so it's hard to get very many under par because you've you got uh, so many par fours. You've got 12 par fours. So another test here of the champion's heart. Sorenstam, who doubled 14 yesterday, has this lengthy par putt left. Roger? Well, almost back up the fall line here. It will move a little bit to her left, but not a lot. It would be easy to overread this putt and miss it high as Brandy did. The green's just not quite as sloped on this left side as it is on the right side where the pin was, or the hole was cut yesterday. I would think that she might want to get away from her philosophy of knocking it four feet by and uh, just uh, let it trickle in the front edge or be short and just get out of here with the bogey. Three putted this hole yesterday for double bogey. Same length as yesterday. So she'll give another shot back at 14. And now at 18, Katrin Nielsmark, another Swede for par. Never hit it. Bogey's 18, but still a fine final round of 69 for the Swede in her second year of playing in the United States. 68 yesterday, back to 14. Bogey attempt. Yeah, nothing really here, just left center. No double at 14 this time, but another bogey for Sorenstam. So bogey at 13, bogey at 14, and the lead is trimmed to five. to the 18th tee, Laura Davies with an iron 418 yards. She can hit this iron if she hits it 240 to 50 yards. Looked like it came off a little low. Yeah, that was just a low scalding two iron, but she got a good lie sitting up in a little brown spot. Well, back at 15, Chris Cheddar to stay one under and then a tie for second. This ball will break to her right. Gonna break, yep. Whoa! Here it comes. Oh! How about that four? <laughs> Holy smokes. Woo. Those are the things you gotta do though in opens. When you hit a bad shot, you gotta have that putter help you out a little bit. That could a four, John. That could have easily been a three shot swing. That ball could have gone out of bounds on the tee shot and then maybe made bogey on this tough hole. So wonderful stuff there for her. Yeah, sure. It's just terrific. Today, the Met MetLife Blimp Snoopy One is providing the scenic shots of Pine Needles Golf Course. The MetLife Blimp contains 70,000 cubic feet of helium and measures over 130 feet in length. Old Snoopy on a nice Carolina blue day. Meanwhile, back in the fairway at 15 after a little wait, Jane Geddes. This is her second shot. Geddes and Cheddar tied for second at the moment. No. Got a little one under. Yeah, sounded a little heavy. Well, that's because the ball's above her feet. You got to be aware of that. As we look back from the green at 16, the par three, 167 yards. Flag today, just 18 feet from the right fringe, and some 12 yards from the front edge. 
Very tough to shoot at this flag because of the bunker over to the right. Yep. Just a six iron. Only 155 yards to the front. She'll just try to hit this 160. Let it release on back to the hole. She's only won once on tour, but last year had her best year by far with seven top ten finishes. Uh, Dave, the last few shots she's gotten so fast with her shoulder action at the top of the backswing uh, that it's just spun out real quick. She didn't do what she did there where everything's synchronized and that she's hitting that little, you know, that little to the right shot because it's just too quick. We'll see if she can slow it down. Well, that par may have helped her slow it down a little bit. Saw her take a couple of big deep breaths on the 14th tee, so I'm sure she's just trying to calm herself. This is will definitely be her best finish at an open ever. Last year she finished tied for 13th. Um, and she's certainly gonna going to better that. Looks like a pretty good shot. And that is a very good shot. Good solid six iron into the middle of the green. While well, back at 15 T, the leader, Sorenstam. Well, it was just delayed slightly because of Gallery crossing the fairway well up ahead. Brandy Burton has already driven the ball on the left side of the fairway in good shape. And that was Annika's caddy, Colin Cam from England. Right in the middle. Gets that slope where it works the ball down towards the left side, so a perfect position to shoot into this as we go forward to 18. From the rough, second shot of Laura Davies after you shot the iron shot off the tee. And that's some power, folk. Let's see if it'll stop. Look at this. Low down ball. It's just amazing the hole location on 18 today, Johnny. You were talking about it earlier. Anything past the hole is going to run off that green like that. That was a good shot, too. 15. Get his third shot. Try to slow down just a little. All right. It's okay. So, 15th hole, Anarcha Sorensen with a five stroke lead over Cheddar and Gettys. Davies, Bradley, and Burton all even. And Jane Geddes working on this four or five footer to stay one under for the day and tied for second with Chris Jetter, who's playing just ahead at 16. Both of them one under for the championship. Five shots behind the leader who's waiting back in the fairway at 15. Dave, it's amazing with her nine three putts. Uh, the first, actually, four days of the championship now being this the fourth day, where she'd be right in contention. I mean, she could be, I mean, within a leading or one shot back easily. All right, this ball breaks to her right and it started right. She missed it from the go. Well, let's go to 18. Laura Davies, third from behind the green at 18. That one wasn't her normal deft touch. She's going well. Well, Laura shot. said this was a golf course, Johnny, that you couldn't be aggressive on, unfortunately, that you just have to lay back, hit the middle of the greens. And I really think that's why you're not seeing the big, big push at Annika right now. It's a very difficult golf course. Well, we have a tremendous golf tournament going on if Annika would have stayed in Sweden. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> back to 16. Chris Shetter now in second all by herself, which she doesn't know yet. This, this is a... Go ahead. This is a 20-footer, slightly downhill, and it will break about two inches to her right. Her caddy, Kirk, always lines her up. They discuss the point they want to roll the ball over, and then he steps aside. never know. I mean, uh, we've seen some strange things happen and something very strange happened this year, April 
at the Masters. That'd be four under for a round today. Back in the fairway. Well, if you were to make bogey here, it would cut the lead uh, to just a few shots. Going right at it. Oh, there goes the birdie. Might oh. increase the lead. <laughs> by the way that was looking, what a shot. Roger, you a little impressed by the way this young woman <laughs> plays? I thought she made it. <laughs> yeah. It looked good from up here. I tell you, she's really a thoroughbred to come out with the lead and just increase it. Now Burton shot. What's she got, Roger? She's got 147 to the hole. This an eight iron. Great angle from this left edge of the fairway. That's good. that eight iron and getting more spin, it's just not going to react like Sorenstrom did. But at any rate, I got to believe Annika was playing a little left of that flag and just pushed it a titch by accident. That's yeah. a tough pin. Laura Davies at 18 for par. Not to be. Still a final round 69 for Laura Davies, who already has a major championship under her belt in 96. And this will be Davies' best open finish since her win back in 87. As Annika Sorenstam marches to the 15th green, the lead is only four. We'll be right back. Burton for a birdie at 15. Just All the work to left. Right about there. She just hit it. Doggone. She hit it tracking. Well, on the hole ahead, at T at 16. Pat Bradley having a very fine tournament. One under for today, even. You can hear her say sit. She knew she'd hit it pretty flush. I'll be trying to cut that in and just caught it solid. She said she's getting pumped. Cheddar's been pumped. She's birdied 16 to get to two under. It's second all by herself. Right over that bunker, or hit her just right with a draw. I think she's done it. And she's long, too. Slow down, ball. Wow. It's sitting up, though. Back to 16. The par three, Jane Geddes. Dropping the shot at the 16th. Even par. Just the way she started the day. Oh, that's a good shot. This didn't stop, but a very nice shot by Jane Getty. She doesn't know from where she is, just how far that she just knows it's passed. Back at 15, this for a birdie to increase her lead. If she should make it, this would be five. The ball will work to her right, just a little outside the left. Dead center, boy, this is really a performance. This is absolutely wonderful. You can't play golf better than this young lady has played today. Well, just ahead, now you look at the updated leaderboard. This is Bradley. Tied for third. All those at even, you see, just from about 60 feet. Should move a little left there. Oh, she hit it a little too firm. Oh, Pat, you left yourself one you don't want there. Well, call on all your experience in times like this. Of course, at this point, if they see that Sorenstrom has birdied 15, they kind of have to feel like, well, they're out of it at this point. The only one with any kind of a chance is Cheddar. And that is slim indeed. Gettys now. Could get into third all by herself if she should hold this. Dave, I just think the players, nobody put any pressure on her early, and that's exactly what they had to do. And especially somebody like Geddes, who likes to work the ball left to right, anytime the pin was tucked on the right, she couldn't get the ball close to the hole. Well, back on the tee. 
leader, defending champion, going to join five others. Won this tournament two years running. Meanwhile, Jane Geddes this to move into third place on her own. What do you think this putt's going to do, Donna? I think it's straight. She hit it. Did she hit it? Well, it was working out to the left. So, with that bar, Jane Geddes, an open champion in her own right, will remain at even par and even par for her round today. This made uh, two birdies and two bogeys. This for a par three. From the rough, second shot for Cheddar. Oh, don't go there. Squirt, right. Squirting right. Squirt. Oh. See if that stays in bounds. Oh, oh, they're looking way left. That might be out oh, there of there. There it is, just near the cables, this side of the uh, television cable. So she's flirted with the cables again here at 17, which has played the toughest hole today. And that ball just squirted right off the club face. 16. Pat Bradley with this six or seven footer to stay at one under for the day and even for the championship. And in a tie with Geddes with whom she's playing and Randy Burton who's back waiting on the tee. She uh, won an awful lot of those golf tournaments with this length putt. Well, that's so true. Plus being the experienced player she is, you know that she wants to go by the hole. She knows what it should do on coming back. Did you hit it? You know, you could make a living saying that people knock it six or seven feet by the hole, they're gonna leave that comeback putt short. I guarantee you, that is, that's too bad, Pat. But really caused by the iron shot, which was maybe either too much club or she just hit it too solid. Back at the tee now, Sorenstam. Roger Maltby with them all day. Roger, what's the mood there? Well, it's very, very quiet. Uh, Annika has not uh, gotten used to the idea that we're convinced that this is over for sure. She is still in the work mode. Still working on that first move away from the ball and they go back straight. Got a six iron here, which is just about right for her to carry to the front edge. Hits at about 155 in the air with the six iron. going at the hole if it gets up. Oh, oh took a big bounce. <laughs> oh. It was a beauty. But she pulled the one on the last hole, went around <laughs> the left there, and then she decided to take a little better aim. I mean, this is a remarkable performance. <laughs> oh, she didn't even know it hit it. Look at this. There you go. Oh, that's fun. Oh. That's fun stuff. I mean, really, John, you mentioned about after the two iron shots that she played at 13 and 14, which were both to the right, and you, both these flags at 15 and 16 on the right, very dangerous positions, and she nails both shots. She sure did. All right, Brandy Burton. Tied for third, Jane Geddes. One over for today. What does she have, Ron? Also a six -hand. Just right of the flag. Oh, beautiful shot. Looked like a little played shot. I, you think she hit that full or just a nice six? I think it was just a nice six. Yeah. And so let's, uh, while we have a chance, take another look at Sorenstam's reaction to that shot. Huh? What? Hit the flag. <laughs> uh, must be my day. Huh? Second U.S. Open in a row. Just hang on. Five-stroke lead with three holes left.
from the Pine Needles at 17. Third shot for Cheddar. Tough shot to pick it out of there. Sounded good. Another miraculous par. <laughs> Well, she had the pine needle save at 15 and working on another at 17 to 16. Brandy Burton for Birdie. And she gets back to even par for the day and one under for the championship and moves into third place. Solo third. One stroke ahead of Jane Geddes. Two players beginning the round today, Sorenstam and Burton, had played the first 54 holes, par or better. Pretty good aggregate score they might have here, Dave. Yeah. Burton shot 70, 70, 69, and with two pars will shoot 70 again. I thought anyone that would break 280 here would win, John. But I mean, this, this lady has shattered 280, and this it looks like. This has got a chance to go minus eight. Cheddar for par at 17 and another save to stay in second place. Just to go eight under. Boy, she's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. After the two bogeys at 13 and 14, comes right back, birdies 15 and 16. Two pars, 272. She'll shatter that 277 record. And the oh. all-time under par mark is Pat Bradley in 1981. She was minus nine, but that was on a par 72 course. So uh, she's way below that, but not the below the amount under par. 17, Pat Bradley. Second shot to the par four. Pat, 194 with a forward. It's very surprising. It seems like it's an awful lot of club. Nice little punch swing. A lot of rhythm in that swing. I love that swing. That's a good shot. On the green. She did it. This golf course, you have to <laughs> wait until it stops because you think you're on and then you go, ooh, went over the green. Now, Gettys. 186 with a four iron. Very nice. To the 17th tee. Toughest hole today. Par 4, 424 yards. Annika Sorenstam. It's been playing 4.494, second hardest hole of the course. Um, uh, you can see this hole. It, it narrows down where the gallery is now, and you've got to fit it right into this area right here. And uh, it's not that easy. You've got OB left and right, trees. Uh, you got to hit it just over that bunker, uh, or at least draw it around it, one or the other. Well, she's made a choice, or a change in her choice of clubs from this tee. Yesterday she had driver down and drove it way up in that neck, but she's gone to a three with a day, which I think is a, a better play. Well, when you got this kind of lead, there's no no use uh, trying to do anything dumb, that's for sure. Setting up right down the right side of that bunker. A little right, Roger. Going up the right side. Needs to get down, I would think, on that line. It's fine. It hits off. Well, it was at 17 where Sorenstam uh, dropped a dramatic long birdie to increase her lead to three yesterday, and right now it is six. <laughs> Pretty good shape there on that count. There's a little bit of an awkward hole for Brandy. She likes to hit it left to right. Doesn't set up well for that. Well, supposedly Dave Stockton's got her working it uh, both directions. She turned that a little bit right to left. That looks really good. It's perfect. And we've given Dave Stockton an awful lot of credit, but uh, Dr. Deborah Graham has really worked a lot with Annika, and, and I think it's been a big help also. I mean with, I'm sorry. With, with Burton. Uh, Brandon and Burton. Here's Cheddar at 18T, working on a round of four right. under. Come on. And will that stay in the fairway? Ooh, yes. Okay. A little lip in. Well, after another birdie, 
At 16, the lead has been hiked up back to six. Sorenstab. Two holes left for back-to-back -back open titles. But Jane Geddes just ahead on the green of Sorenstam. Jane's 24er should move just a tad to her left. She took a hard look at the leaderboard and knows that second and third place is worth an awful lot of money. break towards the front of the green from there, pretty straight. Anytime you par the 17th hole, you're pretty happy. Let's go over to 18. Second shot of Tammy Green. 72 yards. That was a seven iron, this whole plane. A good one club to one and a half clubs less. She was hovering around par until a double at 13 and a bogey at 14 pushed her back to plus three. And that's a good shot here at 18. If you go 10 feet right of the pin at 18, it'll go into the bunker. And if you go about three feet long, pin high, about 15 feet left of the hole, it'll go right off the green and down there where Lord Davies was. So very careful here. You gotta keep it short of the hole. Chris is quite a fearless player, but I'm sure at this point she is just looking at that fat part in the front part of the green. Are you saying sure. she didn't have much fun the last couple holes making those pars? <laughs> oh, she, you know, she chips for dollars all the time with her friend Cindy Rarick on tour, and that is why she's developed such a good short game under pressure. This is eight iron from 160 yards. Looks good if it's enough. Beautiful shot underneath the hole for Cheddar. She's happy with that. Back at 17. Let's take a look at the uh, bag of Sorenstein Marlene. Interesting. It is interesting. A nine wood you'll see at 180, it kind of replaces her four iron. The seven wood, obviously a three iron, but you can grip up and down and move that yardage around. Well, this is a five wood, 216. Got it going right at the hole. Just got a little kick left, but that's very well played. This is amazing. She's at 51 of the 55 fairways so far. And this is that green in vintage Donald Ross style. Well, she just, when she's had a few problems, especially yesterday at 14 when she made a double, that great finish she put on it was the key, I thought. And then, of course, the eagle today. Number oh. 10 was a big one. That's Chris Cheddar, of course. A lot of players have made a run at Annika Sorenstam today, but the most serious one made by that woman, Chris Cheddar. Great round today, huh? Par would be a 66. I tell you, finishing second in the Open is quite an honor. And she finished ninth earlier this year at the Nabisco Dinosaur, and it really shows the level that Chris has gotten to this year, finishing now in the top 10 at two majors. Back at 17, second shot for Burton. 175 yards for the hole. This is six here. Going a little bit right of the flag. Hit soft on her. A little unlucky, really. Let's not forget, Burton is uh, chasing Chris Cheddar for second place. Sorenstam in command with a six shot lead as she plays 17. Chris Cheddar for birdie at 18, a chance for the low round of the championship. Did not get it outside the right edge. Mm. But still with that par putt, that would give her a 66. Annika Sorenstam had a 67 in the second round Friday. Pat Bradley had a 67 yesterday. So Cheddar with her eyes on the round of the championship. Back at 17, Sorenstam from behind the green, Roger. Got a pretty good lie, really, and lots of green to work with. This is 
a little downhill from there and we'll move a little bit from her left to right. Not an overly tough pitch out here. Well played. No weaknesses. Continuing a record pace. As you look at her parents, that is Tom, who flew in from Stockholm last week and really learned about Annika's championship earned at the Broadmoor yesterday while cruising the internet. Talked to him yesterday and uh, he said, I want to witness one in person. He only travels to the United States a couple times a year and picked a good week to do it. <laughs> <I'll say. laughs> Roger. Yeah, this will move from Brandy's right to left all the way. Especially as it slows up, it'll turn a little bit more. Make this to get into a tie with Chris Cheddar for a second. for her first win in three years, but uh, I think she's gained some valuable experience out of this major championship this week, realizing that she still has a fire for the game. Well, there aren't many times you can break par in an open championship and really not have an opportunity to win. That's pretty rare. Soren Stam for par at 17, four par at 18, Chris Cheddar. Little three-footer, not much break to this putt at all. Cheddar has the round of the championship at 66 at 18. Soren Stam has another par at 17. One hole left. Well, that was an exciting round by Chris Jetter, I'll tell you. Those two pars she made from the pine needles uh, <laughs> was something. The leaderboard with one hole left for Soren Stom. She will cruise to her second straight U.S. Women's Open title. Chris Cheddar at two under. Brandy Burton with a chance to try and tie her for second. But now Bradley coming to the home hole. Hitting off a pretty good down slope. Don't want to go long. 175 yards, Johnny, with a five iron. That's a good one. Very good. Well, Pat Bradley also had an unexpected treat yesterday. Her brother Chris decided after he saw her sink a birdie putt on 16, hopped in a car with a buddy and made a 17-hour drive from Boston to get here. Well, if she can just make that putt and finish the championship uh, 280, that's a great total. Now Jane Geddes from the rough. She ripped it off this tee down the left side in the rough, unfortunately. But ball's sitting nicely. 138 yards with a 9-iron. Only needs to carry it about 125 under the green. Get up. Get up. Get up. Seen an awful lot of good golf this week. Very impressive. Well, the USGA really set up this course very fairly. It was a tough test of golf. The golf course stood up, obviously, but the players felt it was not tripped up. It was very fair, and they loved it. Well, the fairways were quite ample. They are 33 to 35-yard fairways, and that's, I think, one reason why the scoring has been as good at, besides the fact that the, there's been great play. On pace to shatter. The lowest 72 hole scores. If she pars 18, she will record a 272 and shatter the lowest previous, set by Neumann in 88, Sheehan in 94. Well, like I said, it's been a tremendous tournament. If Annika wasn't there at 8 under, you would have really had a dogfight going on. There's an open champion back in 86. 
And a Hall of Famer, Pat Bradley, the only player to have won all four of the modern LPGA majors, a half dozen major championships. Soren Stom off the tee behind her with a wonderful whack. Perfect, right in the center of the fairway. Man, that was hit solidly. That 52 was... out of 56, Johnny, is that pretty good? That's pretty good if uh, <laughs> you're chipping. <laughs> Annika has a chance to tie Pat Bradley, by the way, with the lowest score to par. Bradley at nine under back in 81. Going down the left, if it'll clear the rough. They've gotten a light cut, it's okay. Up to the green at 18. Jane Geddes to play first. the story of her week, the putter blade. It's a heck of a performance though, even par on this track is uh, golfing your ball. And uh, I know she missed a lot of putts, uh, Donna was saying, but obviously she made her share too. She just uh, could eliminate some of the little misses uh, and kept the good ones that she had. She'd have had uh, a shot at winning this thing. Now Pat Bradley. Tied for third in the U.S. Open last year. Remember, she shot that uh, 79 in the first round at the Broadmoor before coming back with a 71, a 70, a 68. Donna, you right there? Yes, sir, I am. She's putting back uphill. And, you know, watching Pat today is vintage Pat. Her consistency and putting the ball in the right place at the right time. I think if she had one more round. She could have really chance taken to, a run. Chance to get even par in fourth place. Oh boy. What a way to end it. That's fun to make a birdie on the last hole. 69 for Pat Bradley to end another Open Championship. Pretty nice work on the weekend there, 67-69. Uh, we mentioned early that of her 31 victories, 28 were in come-from-behind fashion in the final round. She loves to charge on the weekend. Even a little misty-eyed there. I think that was pretty exciting for her. Again, I think in all her years, she has never, ever lost her putting stroke. She has been such a wonderful putter. Big putt for Jane here. Straight uphill, nothing to it. Good solid finish for yet another Open champion back in 86. Very consistent scoring, even par. Those two are tied, even par 280. By the way, Pat Bradley in 581 LPGA tournaments in her 22 plus seasons and finished at the top 10. Once again, now 301 times. <laughs> now to the fairway, Brandy Burton to play first, the final twosome. Roger. Just in the first kind of left rough downhill, 178 to the hole. Just a 152 to the front. I think she's just going to try to land a seven iron on the front of this green. Let her release back. I want to keep it under the hole, short of the hole. Got it going a little bit right, though. Hang on. It sounded a little heavy, Roger. Yeah, it didn't get it real solid, John. On the canal, 171. Seven iron here. Uh, 
Solid, Roger. Solid, left of the hole toward the center of the green. Needs to get down. Better Bite. stop. Dang. That's not gonna stop. It's like a vacuum down there. That's amazing, that ball just kept trickling. We'll be right back for the championship finish of Annika Sorenstam in a moment. Just a moment ago, not too many people get to make this walk at age 24. Made it for the first time last year. Didn't know she was at the, the Open champion now at age 25. You have to figure she knows it now. Now live, Brandy Burton's third. That might that better slow down. That was to get into a tie for second with Chris Cheddar at two under. So a relieved Chris Cheddar is with us. <laughs> she will nail down second place. The round of the championship, a 66, and I guess uh, they call this place Pine Needles, uh, appropriate for your round today. You were in that stuff a, a number of times. I was. I tell you what, when you hit it in the rough, it's just, it's hard to get it out, and I proved that today. That's so exciting to get so much out of your round coming in. You just saved almost every stroke you could. That's, yeah. a, that's really fun. Now Annika's third from behind the green. What do you think of this total Annika shooting? Wow. I mean, she's just, she's a great player. There's no question. Her father, Tom, her mother, Gunilla, her aunt also made the trip. Did you think of a number uh, before you headed out today for the final round or, uh, or no? No, but I, I knew that uh, we were going to need some help from Annika in order for anyone else to have a chance. And uh, I knew chances where she was going to come out and, and shoot a good score today. I know you're awfully close with uh, Ben Hogan. You mentioned that uh, you hoped he was watching. I bet he was. I hope so. Well, great performance. Second place. Thank you. Now Brandy Burton for par. Just the fourth bogey for Burton, who has spent the last two days playing alongside Sorenstam. Final round, 71. Right. Solid four rounds in this championship. That's a costly uh, little bogey right there, though, to her, and uh, but a fine championship. Twice on the front, uh, the green on 13 and 18. She doesn't get it up and in. And Annika. Doesn't have to worry about too much, just style points right now. Father Tom looking on. Back for a 66. Back to back championships. Veronica Sorenstam. Eight under par, 272, a record that might not be broken by, by too many people in a long time. Shatters the record by five shots. And this time, the parents get to witness it. Let's go down to Roger Malpe. Roger. Thank you, Dan. Annika, what a great performance. The first bit of emotion we've seen from you. If there was one club that won this golf tournament, it had to be your driver. It was. I was hitting a lot of fairways, and uh, it's been a great week. Back-to-back -back Open Championships. There aren't many people that can say that. No, I'm fortunate. I, I had a wonderful time, and it's a dream come true again. It's unreal. Well, enjoy the moment. You deserve it. Thank you. Back to you, Dan. How sweet it is for <laughs> Annika Sorenstam. Just the fifth player in the history of this great championship. To win it back to back, well now the sixth. Did you say sweet or sweet? 
both. <laughs> well, I tell you what, she's the first foreigner to ever win the U.S. Open, being a lady for the second time. Well, she's getting pretty comfortable with that trophy back there in Sweden. She might try for a three-peat. 